to my channel. So you're here because you want to know how to make traditional Irish blackberry jam. And I'm about to show you how to make this absolutely amazing homemade blackberry jam to eat with some gorgeous traditional Irish brown bread. It does not get better than that. But before we go any further, please make sure that you do give this video a big thumbs up and also please don't forget to hit subscribe, which is that big red button down below to make sure that you don't miss any more of my videos. Now, we are perfectly in season for blackberries at the moment, so if you can get out there and get foraging, they are perfectly ripening up any time between now and say mid-September, they will be at their best. And what you will need for this recipe is a kilo of fruit to a kilo of sugar. That is the standard jam recipe. So the first thing you'll notice when you look at these berries is that they are not 100% perfect. That's totally fine. We are working with nature here, people. So your berries probably will contain some little bugs and grubs, and that's totally fine. But what we can do to remove those from the berries is to just dunk your berries into a bowl of ice water. So literally grab a bowl, grab some ice, pop it into the bowl and then add a sprinkling of salt over, about a tablespoon of salt. That will just draw those bugs out. Leave it for about 10 minutes, swirl it around every now and again to get rid of any of those little hard or fuzzy bits on your blackberries. So while your berries are soaking, we need to sterilize our jars. That is one of the key, key elements of jam making because if you introduce bacteria into your jam, it can cause it to spoil and we definitely don't want that. So how we sterilize our jars was we pop them into the dishwasher at a very high temperature. Now you can also do this in the oven and I leave the details to how you can do that in the description box below. But we found that the most economical and quickest method to do this was to pop them into a full dishwasher just as you're doing the rest of your normal load. You may have to disinfect or sterilize your lids separately. They may not be dishwasher safe, ours were not, so I popped them into some boiling water for just a couple of minutes to kill off any bacteria. Also at this point, what you're going to want to do is pop a plate or a saucer into the freezer to cool down. You're going to use this in just a couple of minutes to perform the wrinkle test and we'll get on to that shortly. So now it is on to the fun part and you're going to grab that large heavy base saucepan and you're going to pop your berries in and literally grab a fork and give them a good mash. Now this will depend on your individual individual preference, whether you like a thick, clumpy, chunky jam like I do, or you like it to be a more fine consistency. But the more you pulp it up and mash it up, the finer and the more silky your end product will be. Once you've done this, dump in that kilo of jam sugar. Give it a mix around and let it just relax there for a couple of minutes. This is just going to bring out the flavors of those berries even more. And now it is on to cooking your jam. So your thermometer will become integral in this whole process. So what we're going to do is pop the saucepan onto a medium heat for a couple of minutes. Now you might be tempted to stir your jam at this point, but just let that saucepan get nice and warmed up. What we want to do is make sure there are no sugar granules left over. So this is a gradual heating up and a gradual melting of those sugar crystals into your fruit. Now of course, do give it a stir just occasionally to make sure that nothing is sticking to the base of your saucepan and really enjoy those smells as they start to fill your kitchen. It really does start to feel like proper jam making at this point. So after a couple of minutes when you test and you can see that there are no sugar crystals left, it is time to bring your jam to the boil. And the boiling point for jam is ideally between 103 degrees and 105 degrees Celsius. Now we always err on the side of caution and we will aim for that 103 degrees mark just to make sure that you don't overcook and it becomes really, really thick and lumpy. Now last year I made a batch of jam, one of my first batches ever of jam, and we massively overcooked it. Not the end of the world, it still tastes really lovely, but it is not spreadable on your bread, so it's not ideal. So we want to avoid that and in order to do so we will err on that 103 degrees side of caution. So as your jam starts to reach that boiling point you'll notice that a foam or scum starts to develop on the top of the jam and this is essentially air bubbles but if you do introduce this to your jam it could mean that as you're introducing air you're introducing more potential for bacteria to grow. So just skim that scum off the surface we're just making sure our jam will last for the maximum amount of time. And at this stage, what you want to be doing is combining your thermometer with your wrinkle test. Pop the jam on the plate and then let it cool for maybe 30 seconds and just push your finger into the jam. And as you do so, you should see it start to wrinkle up. And that is when you know your jam is at perfect setting point. So once you are happy with your wrinkle test, 
this is when everything starts to come together really, really quickly. So you'd ideally like to have your clean and sterilized hot jars on hand beside you because you want to fill your jars with your jam while the jam is piping hot and while your jar is piping hot. Fill the jar to absolute maximum capacity, allowing as little space as possible for bacteria to enter. And if you do have a wax piece of paper or jam paper, you can pop this in on top. I didn't use it in my video today because really this jam is not going to last long enough to mean any bacteria will be introduced. So it's important that your jam and your jars are piping hot because as they cool, after you've popped your lids on, that actually forms a seal within the jar so if you've ever noticed in the supermarket if you press on the lid of any kind of a jar it does not move there is no give in it that is a dead giveaway sign that the jar has not been tampered with now it will take a while for your jam to cool down it is absolutely piping hot so please be really really careful when you're handling the jars I just left them on a clean tea towel in the windowsill to cool down for a couple of hours and allow them to properly set and finish gelling together and there you have it, traditional, beautiful, fresh, Irish, homemade blackberry jam with a zero waste twist. It really doesn't get any better than that. And one of our absolute favorite ways to eat this jam is of course on top of some traditional Irish brown bread. And if you haven't seen that video, I leave a link just above me in a card and I'll also leave a link to it in the description box so you can check out how you compare these two together. I promise you, it is a match made in heaven. If you did like this video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and also please don't forget to hit subscribe so that you don't miss any more of my videos just like this one and I'm really looking forward to seeing you back on my channel again. Bye!